so welcome everyone uh, thank you for joining us for today's uh, satellite learning webinar on getting started with uh, react native unit testing okay uh, my mother is presenting this type of events every month with a new topic for you guys my name is ashok kumar i am software engineer at my mother and i will be the host for your today's session with my team sanjit sarang and uh, subhash tandukia very good morning everyone uh, this is sanjit sarang i am from mind bowser as a software engineer uh hello everyone uh, good morning uh, my name is subhash tandukia and i am software engineer at uh, mind bowser So I am excited to share some valuable information and insight with you on this topic. Before we begin, I would like to give you an overview of uh, what we are uh, covering to, uh, in today's session and how the webinar will be conducting. So we will be discussing on the introduction to the unit testing, testing types, introduction to the test. JS setup and configuration, unit testing with JS, which are the matches we can perform for the JS, testing a synchronous code, testing setup, how we can mock the functions and how we can mock the node modules also, and last point, how we can uh, run the uh, React Native testing library. And if you have uh, any questions, guys, you can feel free to use our chat feature to ask them. without taking too much time here let's get started uh we'll be first under understanding what software testing is going by the definition software testing is the process of evaluating a system or its components with the intent to find whether it satisfied the specified requirements or not it can also be the process of attempting to find defects within the system the purpose of testing is to identify errors gaps or missing requirements in contrast to the actual requirements there are different types of software testing such as unit testing integration testing functional testing etc etc coming to the different types of testing we have unit testing which is testing the very basic building blocks of a software to make sure that it satisfies our requirement then we have integration testing which involves testing how well various units of the component or the software work together then we have system testing wherein we test the entire software to make sure it re it meets the specified requirements and is working as it was intended then we have acceptance testing which involves testing to make sure that software is ready for the deployment and it meets the requirements of the end user functional testing involves the software involves testing the software to ensure that it performs as it was intended and functions correctly non functional testing involves uh, testing the performance the security and the scalability of the software then we have regression testing this kind of testing uh, comes into picture when we have any changes in a software and this ensures that any changes that we have introduced does not bring in the defects with it then we have exploratory testing wherein the tester is free to test the application however he feels uh, however how he feels to make sure that uh, we are not missing any possible bugs in our software in this webinar we'll be focusing primarily on unit testing so unit testing to elaborate what unit testing is unit testing is a software testing method where individual units or components of a software or application are tested in isolation from the rest of the system unit testing is typically done by the developers as they write the code using uh, specialized uh, testing frameworks or libraries in our case case we'll be using jest 
these tools allow developers to write test cases that uh, check the behavior of the individual unit of the code and to automatically run those tests as a part of software build process. This helps us to ensure that the code is working correctly and that any changes that were made in the code do not bring in any kind of defects. Now we'll be moving on to Jest, which is a very popular framework used for testing React Native applications. So guys, uh, let's start with the introduction to Jest. So Jest is a JavaScript testing framework that is uh, widely used for unit testing in uh, React and React Native applications. And it is developed by Facebook and is uh, well suited for uh, testing React component and other JavaScript code. So just uh, provide a powerful and uh, easy to use a set of features for uh, testing, include uh, automate testing, uh, snapshot testing, mocking, uh, assessions library, code coverage, and parallel test execution. So in uh, uh, atomic uh, testing discovery, so in this, uh, just will automatically find and run all tests in a project uh, without uh, the need of to manually uh, configuration test file. Uh, in uh, snapshot testing, just can create a snapshot of the components rendered output and uh, save it to the file. So this can be used to, to check that the component's output hasn't changed over the time. And in a mocking, uh, just allow you to easily mock dependencies such as uh, modules or uh, function in your test. Next, uh, assessment library. So just include its own assessment library, which in uh, uh, build on top of a jasmine uh, and provide a simple and intuitive syntax for uh, writing testes. Uh, next, uh, code coverage. So, just can generate a code coverage report for us, which uh, show which part of the code are being status, tested and uh, which are not. And last, uh, a parallel text execution. So, in this, uh, just can run your test in a parallel, which can uh, significantly uh, speed up. Uh, your uh, test shoot. <laughs> so next, uh, uh, we will see uh, in uh, one example. So just also integrate with uh, other JavaScript tools and uh, libraries, making it easy to test a component and uh, conjunction with other JavaScript code. Here uh, you can see one example of a test case. Uh, following is the simple test case of how can we write the test cases. So writing unit test is uh, quite uh, straightforward. Uh, here you can see there is an example of uh, submission to numbers one and two, and we are expecting the result to be three. So we, uh, we use the test method that just provides, we pass the name of the test, which can be uh, any string. And uh, next is the function for a test in which uh, we write our actual test code, uh, test case. Uh, inside we expect the valid value to match. Uh, next, uh, we will see just setup and configuration. So you can see some points below, uh, adding a, uh, while adding script, generating test configuration, uh, when using Babel, when using uh, TypeScript and uh, custom configuration. So we will see each topic uh, line by line. <clears throat> uh, and next, uh, adding test uh, script. So before using Jest, we need to install the Jest package from npm. Uh, you can see the here uh, the command to install it, which uh, adds a Jest as a developer dependency. And after installing Jest successfully, you can find something like this uh, in your uh, package.json file. Next. Uh, we will see generating uh, just configuration. So as I said earlier, uh, it is too simple for uh, generating just configuration. Uh, you just need to fire this command and uh, it will automatically make a setup uh, for you. You can see the command on the screen. So the command just init is uh, used to initialize the just in a JavaScript project. 
uh, when you run this command in the root directory of your project, it will uh, prompt you with a series of questions to help uh, configuration just for your project. So some of the questions that uh, the just init command may ask include uh, what test environment should just run in? Uh, next is uh, should just use Babel to transform your code? Uh, should uh, just uh, run for test file in a specific directory? Should just add a coverage report? And last, uh, should just include a set of file? So this command will create a test just dot config dot js file uh, in your project root directory, uh, which contain a configuration for a js. Uh, uh, it will also install uh, just uh, as a developer dependency in your project. So after answering all the questions, uh, just will ready to use in your projects. <clears throat> uh, next, uh, we will see while using Babel. So let's uh, see first what is a Babel and why we use it uh, in our uh, project so basically babel is a javascript compiler and uh, it is a tool chain that is uh, mainly used to convert ecma script uh, uh, code into the backward compatible version of uh, javascript and in a uh, current and older uh, browsers or uh, environment so for just uh, when we use a babel again we just need to fire this command and uh, need to write this code in a uh, your babel.config.js file and then we are good to go so next uh, we will see while using typescript so when we use a typescript again uh, we just need to fire this command which are uh, displayed on a slide and uh, need to write this code into your uh, babel.config.js file And next, uh, uh, we will see while uh, we use a uh, custom configuration. So in uh, custom configuration, we can uh, set up in uh, two ways. First, uh, we can add a JEST configuration in a package.json file. Uh, here you can see uh, on the left side of the table and on the other hand, we can create a new file uh, with the name of JEST.config.js uh, in the project root. Uh, like on on the right side of the table if you have created a new file like this uh, then you have to add this file name in the script of uh, packet.json files where you have a uh, write uh, test as a test so guys uh, as explained by subash now we will be showing you how these three files and configuration are uh, looks like in your uh, project So in package.json file, we can see here are the JS configuration we are adding like this. So here we have the uh, configuration with the reset uh, setup file after environment and the ignore path. So here we are passing the path where we are having the uh, our setup file uh, setup file where we have the all the configuration. We just have to uh, add the path here and uh, we have to uh, skip this. Uh, while running the uh, test cases because we are not having any test cases inside this file that's why we have to ignore this file so we have to add this uh, root here yeah, test and configuration uh, path here okay so this is the one way to uh, use the configuration like this and when we are using an, another way where we have the just config.js file in that we can see we have the same configuration uh, we have the same uh, keys to handle that uh, all the path like uh, for the setup file and the ignore uh, patterns we have that uh, same configuration here we just have to use this file when we in, use the uh, just init command uh, on that uh, time this file will get created and this setup we have to use and if we have to use this file then we have to add one more uh, line of code in our uh, package json file uh, here we have to add the file name uh, as we uh, created the file like js dot config dot js here we just have to write this line uh, this file name here 
then uh, this set of file will get uh, used to uh, handle the configuration of this file but we have to keep one of this file uh, configuration here because uh, if we use both the uh, configuration files then it will get conflict and your test gets failed that's why we need to keep one of this like we have to use the jester config file or we have to use this configuration now uh, uh, this is the what the configuration of this looks like in the project uh, so far uh, we uh, do we have any questions or doubt you can put it in the chat if you have any question now we will be uh, doing an uh, unit testing using this now we will be diving into the actual unit testing using this uh, we will be knowing that like we, how we can uh, write the test cases like what are the matches how we can test the synchronous code how can we set up a test how can we mock the functions and uh, how can we mock a node modules now here we can see the uh, just matches we can use for the uh, test writing the test cases the just matches are the functions that makes us like easy to assert the behavior of uh, javascript code in uh, just test the they are used to check the uh, values written by the code being started and uh, can be used in uh, conjunction with expect function to write the test case assertions uh, most of these matches are uh, like self explanatory uh, like as we can see the name itself having the meaning of it like uh, to be uh, to be to equal so so that like uh, to be is uh, checks that actual value is strictly equal to the exact uh, expected value and uh, to be uh, to equal is like uh, this is similar to uh, to be but in addition uh, that is uh, recursively compares the uh, properties of objects and elements of array so these are uh, the matches we can use in our uh, test cases so uh, at the end we will show you the how these uh, matches are perform the test cases okay so just matches provides a simple and powerful way to uh, test the javascript code and helps us to uh, make test assertions more readable and uh, expressive now we will be showing you uh, this matches are used with the conjunction uh, with expect so here we can see uh, the matches are used like uh, we are expecting 2 plus 2 to be 4 so here we are expecting the exact value which is equals to the 4 so 2 plus 2 will be 4 is expecting here if we have any another value here then it will get failed and uh, when we are using an uh, to equal we have to uh, use this uh, while we are uh, expecting the object will be like exact same like that so here we are comparing the object is exactly equals to the uh, that expected value yeah. now we can see the another matches like uh, if we have any uh, null value we have to compare then we can use the expect null and to be and uh, null is the matcher that will be used to match the null value here we can use the to be null or also another way is here like we can use to be in bracket null that will be also uh, check for the null value also we can check the to contain uh, matcher to uh, check the array contains this value or not so this expect value should be like this we can uh, expect using this okay and here are some reference link for the matches
now we will uh, be seeing an asynchronous code how we can test being a developer we everyone must have come across a synchronous code so and we might also have come up across how we can make api calls and we must be aware of how uh, we can use a, a sync await or uh, how we can uh, resolve a promise or how we can reject a promise so in a synchronous testing we can uh, test that uh, uh, any piece of code in jest using uh, the traditional async await or just provides two different methods that is uh, dot resolves and dot rejects with which we can test our asynchronous code now diving into the code i'll show you uh, how we can uh, test any asynchronous code in our uh, in the jest before starting that Let me show you how we structure the test cases in the code. Starting with the, the as Ashok has explained to you and Subhash has explained to you how we uh, write different various configuration for the uh, jest. I'll be explaining you how we can structure the test cases in a code. Starting with, we have a folder by this uh, test's name. Inside that, we have a uh, folders like uh, configs, uh, snapshots. This is a generated folder. This gets generated whenever we uh, do snapshot testing, uh, which involves testing the UI elements of a React component. Now, starting with the configuration, we have a file called setup.js. Now, this file have uh, mocks for, the, for our test cases. Uh, we'll be coming into mock what it is uh, later on in the uh, webinar. So here you can see that we have a library called uh, React Native Async Storage, which is being mocked because we can't, uh, because since uh, testing is a simulated environment, we can't have, uh, have the storage or local storage to be accessed from our uh, in a, in a simulation. That is why we uh, mock those uh, libraries or any piece of code that cannot be uh, replicated in the actual environment. That piece of code can be mocked. So mocking is also quite straightforward. Um, we pass in the name of the library or even the path of that library or even the path of uh, any uh, piece of code like uh, helpers that we write or managers that we write in a code that also can be mocked. Now you'll see, um, uh, I'm not sure how many of you are aware of this, what uh, this async storage is. So async storage is a library which provides access to local storage in our uh, mobile applications, which uh, gives us some of the methods like uh, set item, get item, remove item and uh, clear. So as the name suggests, uh, it does uh, that like uh, setting will uh, set something into the storage, get the item will uh, uh, get the item from the storage and remove will remove that particular item from the storage. Now here you will be seeing uh, there is a fold some folder called source and then we have inside that we have manager. So why is this? Because uh, whenever we write test cases, we try to mirror whatever is there in the root of a project in our actual source code. So, so that whenever there is a lot of test cases, it gets uh, much easier to find uh, uh, where we have written the test case for that particular file or uh, that piece of code. So uh, before uh, diving into the test cases, I'll be explaining you what this uh, storage manager does. Actually, this storage man manager is, uh, is simply a layer between the, between the async storage and the and the actual uh, usage for the code, like uh, we have said, I have just uh, given a different name so that it creates a differentiation between async storage and uh, what this layer will be doing. So this is set value, get value, uh, remove value and uh, clear storage. So this is uh, quite straightforward and it just mirrors the async storage. Coming to the test cases, 
uh, here you will be seeing how we can uh, since uh, accessing async storage is a uh, is kind of a synchronous task so here you will be seeing how we can use uh, dot resolves uh, method that uh, uh, that uh, just provides to test our asynchronous uh, code here you will be seeing that uh, i'm trying to set up uh, to set a value to the storage and uh, this is a description or small uh, one liner which will say that uh, what this uh, test is doing so uh, it says that uh, set value uh, storage should not throw error now since uh, uh, storing anything to the storage uh, we need to make sure that it has to be of string type so we are taking uh, this is this is an object uh, which is uh, this one so uh, we are uh, we are passing it into um, a string value then we are passing it to the to our uh, method uh, that is set value and we are passing the key as well now when this uh, when this piece of code will uh, get executed we are expecting that uh, it will resolve to be undefined why this will be undefined because as you will see in the manager that my set value isn't returning anything that is why I'm expecting it to be undefined. So that is one way of testing uh, for uh, any kind of code that uh, isn't returning anything or returning void. So this is for the set value. Now coming to the get value, I'm trying to fetch that, that same piece of code uh, which I had stored earlier. So here you will see that I'm expecting storage manager dot get value and I'm passing the key and it will resolve to do the same value that I had uh, passed on earlier in my set value right so here you will see I'm using a different matcher that is too strict equal so what it does is it uh, makes sure that the properties of the object uh, that I am testing for matches equally to what I'm uh, getting from the storage manager here now coming to remove value a uh, year i'm trying to uh, remove the value which i had already stored which i had already fetched now here i'm expecting a storage dot uh, uh, get value to be null because i had already deleted or removed that value from my storage so i am expecting this to be uh, null here now coming to clear storage here you will see that uh, uh, since I had already removed the value that I had already already set in, I'm uh, again uh, I'm set I'm again setting up a value inside my storage to make sure that I actually have a value inside my storage. Then I'm clearing it, and then again I'm here I'm writing the actual test where I'm testing by uh, getting that same value which I had already set, and that I'm expecting it to be a null. Now this is one way in which we can uh, test a synchronous code in Jest using the this uh, dot resolves uh, that uh, Jest provides, and another way would be to using uh, a sync uh, a sync await combination, wherein uh, we uh, wrap our code uh, with try catch and we'll perform the same set of uh, 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 functions calls so that uh, here you'll see that it exactly matches what we had written here like um, uh, passing the object into string value then storing it into a storage then again uh, uh, testing expecting it to be um, undefined now we can also um, write here uh, the error cases but uh, it won't be um, executed that is why i haven't written here because uh, in my um, uh, mock setup i have made sure that it will always resolve to be uh, it will always resolve and and will not go into uh, rejection so uh, this is again uh, very similar to what i had shown earlier storing the value getting the value and making sure that uh, it's uh, null or i get the value back in case of uh, get value so far do we have any questions
thank you okay uh, now i'll be showing how we can uh, mock the those functions um, uh, mock any library in the code again uh, i'll be showing you this uh, i hope that you have got idea what storage manager is doing so now i'll be uh, uh, showing you how we can mock that uh, uh, the base library that I'm that i'm using for uh, my storage uh, starting with uh, set item get item remove item and uh, clear so all these methods that i'm i have written here it uh, it replicates the methods that uh, this particular library provides it's very similar to that and uh, inside this you'll be seeing that i'm uh, writing this to be a just function and i'm writing a custom implementation here so that it will return uh, so that in case of set item it will the value will be stored uh, in this object the storage object uh, with the key that i'm getting from the uh, from which I'm getting as a uh, argument. So, and now uh, next is I'm uh, resolving it because I'm wanting this to be a uh, type of uh, promise. Uh, same will go for the get item. Uh, I'm taking in the key, uh, looking into my storage, uh, using that key, uh, getting the response for that, and then I'm resolving that uh, to the uh, to whatever that is calling this method. Same will go for the remove and uh, same will go for the clear so this is how you can uh, mock any library in your code now there are um, certain um, libraries uh, which provides mocks uh, uh, as a part of their code itself so that is another way wherein we can mock our um, our uh, our libraries in just Now I'll be moving on to uh, test setup. So in test setup, uh, there often uh, comes a time where we are uh, we are expecting to repeat certain piece of code. Uh, so so we just provides these methods like um, before each, after each, before all, and after all. So these, uh, so those pieces of code which we are expecting to repeat again and again before uh, any test or uh, before even the test starts. So that piece of code we can write inside uh, these methods, uh, giving explanation for before each. So anything that is written inside uh, before each, that method will be called again and again before every test. Uh, in in the code I showed you right uh, that uh, we I had written multiple tests. So before what before each will do that it will execute that piece of code that I've written inside before each again and again before all those tests. After each will do as it suggests that it will execute that piece of code after um, after every test. And before all is uh, before all will uh, it will execute that that piece of code only once inside that uh, test suite uh, before all of the test cases start then we have after all which will execute after all of our test cases have been executed now um, ashok will be explaining you uh, how will be mocking functions and how we'll be mocking anything in our uh, just uh, so we will check like uh, more about how the mock functions will work like a uh, mock uh, function is also known as a spices and our powerful way to uh, test our javascript code uh, that depends on the other code and uh, they allow you to replace our real functions with the uh, Test specific versions that we can control and uh, observe in order to uh, set our different scenarios. So here we can see like uh, we have the some of the use cases like uh, 
mock return value mock implementation mock resolved value and mock rejected value he, these are the uh, functions we can use when we have an uh, promise or a promise functions so like when we have only the return value then we can use the mock return value and uh, if we have any implementation which will be having some resolve or reject cases then we can use the mock implementation in that function we can resolve or reject the function uh, returns in that and if we have to use only a resolved value function then we can use the mock resolved values the here we can have only the resolved value and if we have to use only the return value then we just have to use the mock rejected values that will only give us the rejected values that are uh, that are like thrown values <laughs> These are the powerful and flexible tools to test the test, uh, test the JavaScript code, and uh, it just provides a simple and intelligent syntax for working with them. Now we will be diving into the React Native testing library. A uh, React Native testing library is a very popular testing library for React Native applications. It is built on top of a DOM testing library and it is used for testing React Native components. Uh, React Native testing library provides a set of utilities for interacting with uh, React Native components, including querying the component tree, uh, simulating events, and asserting on the component state and its output. So now Subhas will be uh, uh, giving more uh, elaborate explanation on what uh, React Native testing library is. So now uh, we will see how can we get the element uh, using chest. <laughs> so uh just provide us uh, so many functions to get element as per our requirement like uh, if we want to get by uh, id then uh, we can use uh, uh, get by test id or query by test id and if you like to get the element by a text then uh, we can use a uh, get by text and a query by text so uh, just have a different variants for that like uh, get by uh, get all by or query by query all by uh, find by and the last find all by and uh, just also provide a different uh, types of queries like uh, we can get element by uh, test uh, by text uh, by placeholder text uh, by test id by uh, label text uh, by role and so on so these are uh, widely used query in a chest so uh, one thing uh, we must know that uh, get by function will throw an error if uh, element not found but uh, query by will return null so here you can see how can we access the element uh, using by test id so here in a yellow text um, my element is the test id so uh, just check in the code and uh, find the element with the uh, same test id and uh, return the element <clears throat> so next uh, here you can see uh, one more example i used a query by test id in this example so uh, it will work same as the query by test id but different is only uh, if element not found then uh, get by test id will throw an error while a query by uh, uh, test id will uh, return a null so next uh, we will see uh, how can we use a uh, uh, user event and uh, fire events so uh, in uh, in this library uh, provide us uh, so many user events uh, such as uh, click events uh, uh, double click events typing events upload events and clear events and so on so uh, we can uh, simulate this uh, user event from and uh, from submission or to the test have your component render to user interaction so uh, in the testing library provide us a fire events function to simulate 
uh, user events on a specific element so you can see in the uh, example i get the get an element by a test id and use the press method from the fire uh, fire event function to the press uh, press the button so ashok will show you how the actual uh, code look like and uh, how it's working so ashok uh, hi yes so i will be showing you the how the uh, test cases are written for this like we can see here we have an example for like uh, we have the uh, text with the to do here we have the text input then we have the view button and then we have the text and scroll view in that we can see all these uh, elements having an a test id so we are using this test ID for writing our test cases. So here we can see the header is I mentioned as the main header as a test ID. Then uh, we have the text ID as the text input here. Then uh, we have the button is the test ID for this. And also with the scroll view, we have the uh, list here in that. Okay. And that uh, list we are having an uh, actions like uh, on press, we are deleting this action. So how we can perform the Test, uh, test cases on this uh, let's see here so in this our test folder this structure we have the test cases here so in app uh, test we can see how the test cases are performed so we initially we have to render the uh, our component in every test cases to write the test so here we can see the we have uh, rendered this component and this component will return us uh, some snap snapshot and we are matching the snapshot uh, with our existing snapshot so if initially this uh, snapshot was not there then it was not there then it will create a, this file mm -hmm. and if we have any uh, changes in that we can match this snapshot and uh, check the which are the changes are there and uh, we can update this okay so here uh, we just matching the snapshot so uh, i will show you the which are the commands we can use here so here we can see uh, npm run test and hyphen hyphen space hyphen u uh, is the command to use uh, use for the updating our snapshot. So if we use only uh, this command npm run test, it will uh, only matches the uh, snapshot there. And uh, if there is any change, it will give you the error. And if we have to update this uh, snapshot, then we have to use the hyphen hyphen uh, space hyphen u command to update this snapshot. So I will show you initially how the uh, test cases are, uh, tests are running here. Here we can see, the, okay, sorry, I need to change it. If we have the two configurations here, then it will be uh, give you the error. So here, uh, our all the test cases are passed. So if we have any change in the, our uh, app.js, then how the our, uh, tests are failing and how we can uh, update it, let's see. now we have the change in our file so uh, if we run the test cases using uh, only the uh, npm run test command then it will get failed because we have updated the code and our uh, snapshot will get update need to be update Ashok, I think you you have to remove uh, minus u from the packet or JSON file. Okay. Oh, sorry, I was added there.
we'll check for the next uh, scenarios okay might be these changes are not getting saved properly okay so here we can see uh, how the our uh, query by test id are performing so here we have to render the app first and then we are checking the uh, input field and button with the header initial uh, state so here we are uh, checking is this available or in uh, our test or not so spin uh, query by test id has an uh, uh, test id is main header so we are taking this object and uh, we are checking is, is this uh, defined uh, there or not so this is the test cases we are uh, having uh, checking that uh, is defined or not and for the input field we are just checking the query by test id and uh, we are checking uh, that element is defined or not okay. and for button also we have the same and when we are having uh, uh, any test cases means which are uh, any test id are not uh, present in our uh, uh, our code then we have uh, this object will be written as a null so we have we are checking here is this uh, header is available in our uh, code or not so this it will be written as a, a null and uh, now we will check for the uh, how we can we uh, use the fire events here so initially we are uh, taking the uh, text input object and then we are checking uh, taking the uh, button object and uh, then we are uh, adding an uh, one fire event with the input field with an a fire event dot change uh, text in that uh, we are adding this uh, first text in our text field and then uh, clicking on that button so for that we are uh, adding an, an a press uh, event here so here we are passing this button on this uh, button uh, press we are adding this element in the list and uh, this list will get uh, updated and here we can check that uh, list is updated or not so this is the test id for this uh, that list so here we can check this uh, list item is having a uh, length one or not because we are just adding an uh, one item so we have that uh, we have to check that length so there are two ways to check the length for this so we can check the array and then uh, uh, to have length this matcher will be uh, used to check the length and if we don't want to uh, use this then we can use the uh, array dot length and to be uh, matcher to use this in that we just have to pass this uh, exact match uh, or length then uh, it will be checked with the array length okay. now we can check the uh, delete how can we can delete the list and how it will get updated so now here we can uh, we are getting again an uh, same input field and button and then adding an uh, one text and then uh, click button to add this text again we are adding this uh, new text in that uh, array and uh, this is the on press action after adding this uh, we will get an uh, uh, array size is 2 now uh, we are uh, having an uh, uh, delete action to perform uh, this we have just only uh, press functions to this uh, we are taking the list item so here we are uh, taking this first object from this uh, uh, array and we are uh, on click we are adding an on click action on, on this list and on this list click we are deleting uh, this object and after this deletion we are checking is this deleted or not because we have initially added a two values in that array and after uh, deleting the first object we are checking the length should be a one now okay. so this is the, how the uh, uh, react native testing library will be used for the uh, testing purposes so now we can see the matches uh, with the conjunction with the expect function uh, if we uh, have any other matches like uh, as we explained, explained earlier the to be to equal and uh, we, how we can use this for the uh, any specific uh, calculation or if we have to check for any object objection 
so two equal is like we are uh, initially taking an one const variable with this uh, keys and then we are updating this with some uh, value then uh, we are expecting this three values should be uh, matched with this uh, updated object so how this uh, we are uh, matching we can see here okay now uh, we can check like uh, if we don't uh, uh, have to use the direct matches like this if yeah, our cases are like not to be matched so we can check here a plus b is not to be zero this type of operation we can perform in our test cases Uh, now we can see here the length operations like we are uh, initially show you the how the length are uh, performing like this now we can see how the functions are handling here so here uh, we have an array of uh, languages and we are calling these functions and we are checking this function is getting called or not so here uh, we have created one mock function okay in that mock function we are passing in this function as a callback function here so here is this function we have that callback function and we are checking this uh, is this values available in that list or not if this is available then only this will get called otherwise no uh, this will not get called so we are checking this <coughs> uh, this language function is getting called or not so initially we are passing uh, this uh, java keyword in that uh, parameter now we are checking this uh, array hold this or not uh, this is holding it so that's why uh, this function will get called uh, so we have just checked that matches to have been called okay so this function will get called and uh, this ma uh, matcher will get executed and if we have the uh, different uh, values which are not present in our array in that case we just have to check this function will not get called so th for that we have to use not uh, and uh, to have not been called. So this is like expect. We are expecting uh, is like this function will not to be called. How we can perform this action? We you can see here. Okay. So now uh, we can see the uh, reference links. Yeah, these are the reference links for the uh, JEST and the React Native Testing Library. Um, so far, uh, if you have any guy uh, doubts, can uh, feel free to ask.